Hey everyone, Mr. A here. I hope everyone is doing spectacular today. Today we have a, a little bit of a different setup going on. This time I will be showing my face, so now you will all be able to see my beautiful face and how I look. So enough with that, now we're going to be talking about the dodging game. So in the dodging game, we're going to be having a sprite dodge obstacles that is falling from the sky. Pretty simple, so let's get to it. So I'm going to be going to my backpack, and I'm going to be grabbing my moving blocks. So I just want my sprite to move left and right. If that's the case, I will be getting rid of the up and down arrow. And when I start my game, I want my sprite to start at that specific location. So we can go to motion and grab the go to. And anytime I start my program, it will go to that specific location. So when I go ahead and start my program, now I can just move back and forth. Pretty sweet, right? So now, now that we got our sprite moving left and right, now we need a sprite that will be our obstacle that we need to dodge. Let's go ahead and select that sprite. In this case, I want to choose something pretty heavy when falling. Let's go with a baseball. I would not want to stand under a baseball when it's falling from a very high altitude because it would hurt a lot. So now that we have our baseball, we will be going, we will be going to our events blocks and be grabbing when the green flag is pressed because anytime we start a new line of code, we need a, an event block, right? Now, now let's go ahead and start cloning our sprite because we need to clone our sprite so the falling objects can just continue falling as it keeps cloning itself, right? Let's go ahead and do that. So forever, I will wait one second and then create a clone of myself. And when I start as a clone, I want my baseball sprite to be on top of the stage and hidden all the way to the top where we cannot see it. So if we, in order to do that, we're gonna go to grab the go to block and if we're going to have our baseball sprite be all the way up there and hidden away from the stage, we're going to go with a, X, a Y value sorry, of 200. So when I start as clone, it's going to be all the way up there hidden. And on the, along the X axis, I want my sprite to relocate when cloning so it falls randomly without me knowing so I can dodge them. So to do that, we're going to be going to operators. And we'll be, we will be be tweaking two numbers. So our smallest X value, which was minus 240. And our largest X value, which was 240. So when I go ahead and start my program. See how it's up there cloning. And if this is still down here, let's optimize it a little more. Let's actually have our sprite fall down now. But before we do that, anytime I start my game, I want to hide my sprite because I don't want to know where it's relocating or where it's cloning. In order to do that, we're going to be hiding our sprite first. And now, in order to have it fall, we're going to have it we're going to have it show itself first and then go to control. We're going to go ahead and grab the until repeat until. So this repeat until block works works like whatever is inside will continue to run as long as the condition is true. So example, if Anthony is hungry, then I will keep eating, repeat until full. So until I'm full, then I'll stop eating. So we will be showing ourselves and then we're going to have our sprite fall. So if our sprite's going to fall, we will be changing our Y because Y is up and down, but since it's going down, our y is going to be minus 10 and it will be changing y by minus 10 until our y position is less than minus 180. So until our y position, we go to motion, is less than minus 180. So once it's all the way down here, I want my clone to delete itself because I don't want to have a stack of clones just piling up on each other and it just gets very messy and I don't I don't want to deal with that. Oh, let me go ahead and do it one more time. 
So now when I start my game, yeah, now our sprites are falling in random locations, which is exactly what we wanted. But now let's have a program where if the baseball touches the sprite, we just lose. Let's go ahead and show that. So if, let's go to control. If I am touching, touching the baseball. So what this is doing is if my sprite one, our cat is touching the baseball, we would just have it stop all. So we can grab the stop all from the control blocks. So now when I go ahead and play my game. Ah, so now when I stop, it stops. To, now my program stops when my baseball hits me. Let's even add a little more excitement to this. So let's even add a score. So we're going to go to variables and there is no coding block for a score so we're gonna have to be creating our own variable so we're gonna call it score and hit ok so we want our score to change after we dodge it right so if I go ahead and change grab the change score by one we want to change score by one once it hits the ground and the sprite disappears right where in our code do we have that programmed? Hmm. I think I have an idea. So I want to change my score by one after it falls all the way down and then deletes my clone. So we will be changing the score by one. But when I start my game, I want to make sure we want to set our score to zero. Because if I set my score to five, that's kind of unfair, right? Now let's run our program and see how it looks. So we got a score of one, ah, two, three, four. See how the sprites are deleting once it hits that floor and then the score is changing after the sprite deletes. It's exactly what we told it to do. And then it ends at 13. To even add more pizzazz and even more flair to our game, let's go ahead and add a high score. So how will that look like? So if I go to my events block, and I go ahead and grab a forever. And I'll be grabbing an if block. So we're going to be having it if my score is greater than my high score. We're going to break this down step by step just so it's a lot easier, easier for, you, for you all to understand. So if my score, we're going to go to variables, my score is greater than my high score now we're going to create a new variable as well for that so we're going to call that high score so if my score is greater than high score then we will set our high score our high score to score So let's go ahead and run that and see how it looks. So at the moment, my high score is 13. Let's see if we can beat 13. Awesome, awesome. And we beat it. We have our own high score. This is a quick little demonstration of the dodging game. So let me show you a more complete version of the dodging game. So, here we have one of my students' projects. So it's the same, similar to what we have. We're creating our clones. We're setting our variables to zero when we start. This is the falling program. Here we have, when we touch one of the lives, we lose a life. And we have our moving sprites. And he even added lives to all this, which is pretty awesome. So let's go ahead and see how this program looks. Haha, <laughs> I love Mario. I grew up a big Mario fan, so this is pretty nostalgic for me. And this is pretty awesome. I even have lives, so if I hit Mario, I lose a life. 
So let me go ahead. And I even have a losing screen, which is pretty spectacular. So that wraps up this video. So my challenge to you all is to create your own dodgy game that has an intro and an end screen. Obviously, your falling sprite and the sprite that will be dodging it, as well as backdrop and add some sound to it. So I'll be seeing y'all in the next video.